Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for subscribing, for commenting, for liking, for all your support. Thank you so much and uh, I'm very excited to see you today. If it's your first time, welcome to my channel. My name is Daphne and as always, you're welcome on this channel and make sure that you subscribe if you're not subscribed. So welcome to Wisdom Wednesdays. We're back again and we want to go straight into the Word of God. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 16 verse 3 to 10 which say, then Sarai, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, and gave her to her husband Abraham to be his wife. After Abraham had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, so he went into Hagar, and she conceived, and when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress became despised in her eyes. Then Sarai said to Abraham, my wrong be upon you i gave my maid into your embrace and when she saw that she had conceived i became despised in her eyes the lord judge between you and me so abraham said to sarai indeed your maid is in your hand to do to her as you please and when sarai dealt harshly with her she fled from her presence now the angel of the lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness by a spring on the way to shah and he said hagar Sarai's maid, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I'm fleeing from, my, from the presence of my mistress, Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit yourself under her hand. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly so that they shall not be counted for multitude. Amen, amen, amen. Um, I had initially planned to uh, speak about complacency. Uh, from Monday I thought I'd receive a word by then but instead I was given this word today um, concerning Hagar you cannot afford to promote your Hagar in this season it's important to understand the times and the seasons that you're in right now Sarai did not understand the time and the season of her promise she did not comprehend the mindset of God and the time frame of, of God such that she came into a position whereby the enemy enticed her to promote Hagar because of desperation you cannot afford to be desperate in this season. We have to allow the time frames and the promises of God to come to pass according to God's will, according to God's standard, according to God's time frame. We cannot afford to be desperate because when we are desperate, we begin to promote people that are not meant to be promoted concerning our promise. So here we see Sarai and Abraham. They were in a time, a pivotal time, whereby a promotion was about to take place. They were in a pivotal time and season that was about to change generations. Sarai and Abraham had been promised to have Isaac. I don't know if you perceive in your own life the time and the season of God promise. Sometimes when God tells us something, maybe it was five years ago, we can begin to take it very lightly because of the time frame. Because maybe 10 months have gone by, 10 years have gone by, 10 weeks have gone by. You know, time has gone by and you're beginning to take the promise of God very lightly. You have forgotten the earnestness. You have forgotten the passion that was behind the words of God. You have forgotten the value and the importance that was behind the words of God the rhema word of God or the prophetic word that came into your life God told you something but because of the years and the times and the process you have forgotten the importance the value even the blood that is upon those words the blood that is upon that promise that he gave you because the promise is affecting generations the promise is going to affect your future the promises are going to affect your future generations the promise is even going to affect cities and nations if God told you something that means there are people and situations and areas that are going to be affected and affected because of the promise coming to pass I don't know what God has told you, but it's important that we continue to water ourselves in the word of God, continue to be filled with the spirit of God concerning that word. You must continue to blow into that word. That word must continue to breathe in your life. That word must continue to breathe. The heartbeat of the word must continue to beat. It must never lose the rhythm and the beating that it had from the very first day that you heard that word. So Abraham and Sarah were given a promise we're given a word in a prophetic we're given a prophetic word that an isaac was coming and because of isaac that abraham was going to be a father of many nations that he was going to have children more than the stars in the sky so this was a promise that affected generations but the years began to pass by the enemy began to speak in secret in the ears and the heart of sarai 
that look at you look you don't really have any children you know what's happening here to the point whereby Sarah became so bitter that she began to blame God and it says in verse 2 see now the Lord has restrained me from bearing children this is in verse 2 Sarah came to a position of desperation a position of bitterness such that she began to blame God that God is restraining her from having children she did not understand the reason why the womb was closed do you understand the reason why the womb of your finances the womb of your marriage even your physical womb if you're facing something and the womb of that situation is closed do you understand why it is closed because not everything is demonic sometimes God is closing it because the appointment for the promise is not yet because the promise is is for a certain time and season because a lot of people are attached to that promise do you understand why the womb is closed because if you cannot understand why the womb is closed that means you are in a very dangerous situation a situation that may put you in a place whereby you are promoting the wrong kind of people to help you bear forth or conceive in the area that you need your womb to be opened in the bible says that sarai took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, and gave her to her husband Abraham to be his wife. What are you giving to your destiny? Maybe you have friends in your life right now. Maybe you have places or things in your life, but you're about to promote these things because maybe an area of your life is dead. An area of your life is not conceiving and you're about to promote these people to help you in a situation, but these people are not meant to be in that position. Can you recognize your Hagar? Can you recognize the situation that is like your Hagar? Can you recognize the Egyptian in your life? You cannot afford to promote the Egyptian in your life. The Egyptian is not meant to be promoted into your life. The Egyptian is not meant to be promoted in that situation there are people in your life that are like Egyptians and you're not meant to promote them you're not meant to bring the Egyptian in a place of elevation because tomorrow you're going to cry tomorrow that Egyptian is going to despise you Sarah began to promote the Egyptian to the point whereby she became equal with this Egyptian she was meant to be a maid Sarah decided to promote her to a place of being a wife a second wife to Abraham but Sarah's mind and Sarah's purpose for this was for her to have children. She did not understand the implications that this was going to bring. Do you understand the implications of you promoting people that are not meant to be promoted in your life? You're not meant to go with them where you're going next. They're not meant to go with you into the next season. Can you recognize your season? Can you recognize that you're about to approach the promise? That you're about to approach the season whereby God is opening your womb, the womb of your finances, the womb of your career, the womb of your blessings, the womb of your promises. Of course, you're already blessed, but there are seasons where certain things begin to erupt and they begin to grow. There's a season and a time for everything. So there's, there's a season whereby even though you're blessed with every spiritual blessing, but those blessings begin to manifest at a certain time and season in your life. Can you recognize that God is about to open your womb? Can you recognize that only you and your husband, only you and God need to be connected to that womb? You cannot afford to bring everyone in the picture. You cannot afford to connect everyone to the womb of your blessing. Sarah and Abraham were in the correct place at the right time. It tells us that they were in the land of Canaan and they had dwelt there for 10 years. After 10 years, after 10 years, then Sarah decided to give Abraham a second wife. And the Bible tells us that Abraham went into her and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress became despised in her eyes. You see, they will despise you. You have helped these people. You have promoted them. You are not meant to help them. You are not meant to play the Holy Spirit in these people's lives. You see, sometimes people think they need to play the role of the Holy Spirit in people's lives, but these people will despise you in the end. You thought that you could be friends with that person, but now they despise you. You thought you could help that person, but now they despise you because you are not meant to take them with you. You are not meant to be in that level that you are in together right now. You see, it's not everybody that needs to be on your level. Some people are not meant to be at that kind of level because at that level, they begin to see the promises. At that level, they begin to see the advantages that you have. At that level, they begin to see the favor that you have. Hagar was now like a wife. She was a second wife to Abraham. 
She was a second wife like Sarah. She began to see the privileges that Sarah has. Sarah had the heart of Abraham. Sarah was the wife that Abraham loved. Sarah had all the privileges that a wife has. But Hagar was just there to bear children. So it's no surprise that Hagar began to be envious, began to be jealous. If you really study this, you begin to see that it's an issue whereby her despising of Sarai in her heart is bottled up in a lot of emotions, in a lot of things and issues that were happening on a day-to-day -day basis. So Sarah became despised. She had conceived. You know, they had come into an agreement. I'm going to make you a second wife to Abraham. But the purpose of this is so that you can bear as children. You see, you've told these people they are raw in your life. But now they despise you. You thought you were walking together in agreement. But now these people despise you. You thought you were equally yoked. But now he or she despises you. Because now they've come to a level whereby they see certain things that they never saw before. You see, when Hagar was just a maid, there's certain things that she didn't see. But now that she was elevated, to being a wife. There's certain things that she began to notice about Sarah. There's certain things that your friends will begin to notice in your life. There's certain things that people will begin to notice in your life as they become closer. But some of those people are going to despise you. This is why you cannot afford to be so close to everybody. Sarah cannot afford to be so close to Hagar. You cannot afford to be in the same room together, in the same sphere of influence together. You cannot afford to walk with these people hand to hand because they are not meant to be at that level. They cannot handle the level that you're pulling them up to. These people cannot handle that. This is why we even see Abraham and Lot being separated because there are certain people that cannot handle being on the same level as you. So God has to separate you from those people. So Sarah noticed that Hagar is no longer listening to my instructions. When I tell her to go and sweep that room, she gives me an attitude. She's no longer listening to the things that I tell her to do. I told her that she's just here to have children for us. She's just here to conceive for us. Now she despises me. She thinks that she's entitled to the privileges of a wife. You see, you helped these people, but now they think they're entitled to your privileges. They think they're entitled to your promises. They think they're entitled to partake in your blessings. Have you seen people in your life and the fact that you're related to them, the fact that you have this relationship with them, they think they're entitled to your blessings. They think they're entitled to your privileges that you worked so hard for. You see, people begin to think that they're entitled to your seat entitled to your throne, entitled to your crown because you've promoted them to stand with you because they're standing with you. They think they're entitled, but God has not called them to be entitled to your privileges. God has not called everybody to be entitled to your promises. God has not called them to be entitled to your breakthrough. We have to be a people that are ready to say, no, you're not entitled to my breakthrough. Even though we talk on the phone, twice a week. You're not entitled to know my secrets. Even though we are in the same university, you're not entitled to come with me where I'm going. You see, we have to be people that are not afraid to say no. We have to stand up and protect our future. Stand up and protect your destiny. Stand up and protect your anointing. Stand up and protect your dreams because not everybody is entitled to what you have today. Have you promoted your Hagar? Hagar was never meant to be promoted. The Egyptians in your life were never meant to be elevated to the same place that you are. You were never meant to walk with everybody where you're going. We have to understand that sometimes it might look like you're being rude. Sometimes it might look like you're not being very welcoming, but you're not meant to walk with everybody at a certain level. The level of being a wife for Sarah was not meant to be a level that Hagar was meant to walk in because she cannot handle that level. She cannot handle it because when she gets there, she'll begin to despise her. When they get there, they'll begin to despise you. Sarah noticed that Hagar began to despise her and she began to blame her husband for her own actions. Are you blaming other people for your own decisions? You saw that these people are fighting you now. These people are despising you now. These people are showing you attitude. But this is because you promoted them. This is because you gave them the place and the room to do it. This is because you did not rebuke those people. When they wanted to come with you, you did not close the door because there are certain doors and certain places and certain paths that you're never meant to walk with hand to hand with these people. Why did you run ahead of God?
Now you have all these people despising you because you ran ahead of the plan of God. God says, let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect, that you may be complete and lacking nothing. There's certain promises that require patience to have its perfect work in you, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. There's certain breakthroughs that require patience. You see, you can fast all you want, but the breakthrough is requiring your patience. The promise is requiring your patience. And now because you were impatient and you were desperate, now you begin to blame other people for the problems that you're facing today. Are you facing problems because you ran ahead of God? You promoted Hagar. You began to give the Egyptians place and room in your life. You began to look at the wombs of the Egyptians because their wombs looked like, like they are fruitful. And so you took their wombs and these people now despise you because you used their wombs and they cannot handle the position that you called them and used them at. You cannot afford to use Hagar and think that there will not be a backlash. Hagar carries a certain nature such that when you use these people, they will despise you. They will feel used because when they get to that position, they see that there was nothing here for me. Though you promoted me in this place, but I don't have the privileges that you have. So they begin to despise you. Though we are friends, it looks like I don't have the privileges that you have. You called me to be your friend. You called me to be in this situation. You called me to be in this and that, but I don't have your privileges. I don't have your favor. I don't have your blessings. I don't have your grace. I don't have your anointing. So these people begin to despise you because they want what you have and they want everything. So when you promote these people, they begin to feel used because they cannot have what you have. You see, sometimes your Hagar is actually very innocent. Your Hagar is an innocent person. It's an innocent situation. It's an innocent circumstance. But the fact that you've elevated it, it'll begin to manifest as something else because it cannot handle that kind of position. I don't know. I don't know what you're facing today, but you need to trust in the Lord. God is saying, trust in me. Do not promote the Egyptian. Do not promote Hagar in that situation. Trust in my provision. Trust in who I've set around your life. Trust in just what I've given you today. For this conception to happen, all you need is the Holy Spirit and Abraham. You don't need anything else. You don't need anybody else. You just need the Holy Spirit, power of God and Abraham. You need the power of the Holy Spirit. You don't need Hagar in that situation. God is saying, stop putting your own strength in the things that I want to do. Stop going ahead of me. Stop taking the driver's seat because you're going to drive the wrong way. You're going to drive off the road to a place of danger. You might drive off the cliff because you're not trusting in me. The Lord says, trust in me and I will bring the right things, the right people at the right time. Trust in the Lord. Just be still in the season. Be still and know that I am the Lord. Be still and see that I am the Lord. This is what the Lord is saying. Do not promote Hagar in the season. You can imagine that when Hagar would see Abraham and Sarah maybe sharing an embrace or maybe kissing or maybe touching or maybe hugging, you can imagine how Hagar began to feel. When Hagar would see the way that Abraham speaks to his wife, when Hagar would see the way that Abraham looks at his wife, when Hagar would see the way that Abraham treats his wife, you see, it began to hurt her deeply because she did not have that kind of grace. She did not have that kind of favor. There are people around your life that see the way that life is treating you. They are seeing even the way that situations and even your spouse or even your future spouse treats you. And these people want what you have. They desire what you have. This is why they despise you. They've come so close to you. They've come so close in your life such that, such that they begin to despise your blessings, despise your privileges and the grace upon your life. Hagar was never meant to be promoted. There are certain people that are not meant to see you this close. There are certain people that are just meant to be really, really, really far from you. Far from the things that you do. Far from your secrets. Far from the privilege that you have. You're not meant to show everybody. Because 
there's a lot of Hagar's that will begin to despise you. And to make matters worse, you know, Sarah reported this and she began to blame her own husband. Her husband said, do to her whatever you wish. She is your maid after all. You see, Abraham did not even care or even look at Hagar in that way. Hagar decided Abraham to look at her in such a way that Abraham was unable to look at her at. There are people that are desiring your Abraham to look at them in a way that is impossible to be looked at. And these people, when they see that your Abraham does not look at them in that way, that the blessing in your life, that the favor in your life, that the situations in your life do not look at them in that way, they begin to despise you even more because they cannot attain what you have. You cannot afford to promote your Hagar. You cannot afford to be on the same level as Hagar. There are certain people that were never meant to be on that level because they cannot handle it. I have to keep repeating this for somebody. You cannot afford to be on that level with that Egyptian in your life. Can you recognize the Egyptian? You know, when we read this, we see that Sarah and Hagar end up in the situation whereby Sarah dealt harshly with her. This is all because she went ahead of God. This is all because of desperation. This is all because the womb was not meant to be open yet. This is because they needed to be patient to run its perfect work. And the angel of the Lord found Hagar because she fled from Sarah's presence. And the angel of the Lord said, Hagar, Sarah's maid. You know, when I read this part, I'm always amazed because in the eyes of the Lord, in the spiritual realm, Hagar is known as Sarah's maid. There are people and situations in your life that are known as your maid. They are not known as your equal. They are not known as on the same level as you. They are known as a maid, as somebody who is meant to just help you in certain things and situations. Can you recognize your maid in the season? Can you recognize that situation that is like a maid in the season? Can you recognize the friends that are just like maids in the season? There are people who are just meant to be like servants. They help you here and there, but not in everything. They're not meant to help you concerning things that have to do with your womb. They're not meant to help you with things that concern nations and kingdoms. They're not meant to help you concerning things that have to do with a lot of blood and souls. They're not meant to help you with certain things that concern your promises in the spiritual realm. They're just meant to help with physical things, things that don't have spiritual connotations, things that don't have a lot of value in the spiritual realm. They're just meant to sweep and encourage you here and there. For example, they're just meant to encourage you in certain situations. They're just meant to make you laugh or just bring joy in your life. But they are never meant to be like a counselor in your life. Do you know that there are people who are not meant to be counselors in your life? Some of you are looking for somebody who is meant to be just a maid to help counsel an area of your life. You're not meant to reveal that area of your life in that person because that person is not your counselor. That person will begin to despise you because you've revealed to them a secret that you are never meant to reveal. Can you recognize your Hagar? The angel of the Lord said, Hagar, Sarah's maid. The angel of the Lord had to remind Hagar of who she was. May the Lord remind those people who they are in your life. May the Lord in this season, we're going to pray after this video, remind those situations, those people. May the Lord, the word of the Lord begin to be in, embedded in the hearts of those situations, in the hearts of those people, to remind them of their position, to remind them of who they are. Because those things and those situations are despising you. But God's grace is able to come through for you today. God's grace is able to turn the situation around. And cause those people and those situations to submit once more. Yes, the grace of God is, is able to turn around the hearts of those people, the hearts of those situations. To begin to go back to their rightful positions of being a maid and not a wife. See, God is very very serious about submission submission concerning your leader submission in marriage submission in parenting god is very very serious about submission submission in the workplace so god takes submission very very seriously this is why the angel of the lord had to be sent to remind hagar who she's submitting to, to remind Hagar of her situation. I pray in this season, maybe you are the one that is like Hagar. And somebody has used you, but now you've come to a place whereby you cannot handle what you're seeing. You see that this person just used you to have a child. This person was just using you because of your womb. Although you understood that this is the contract, but because of what you see now, because of the position that you were elevated at, 
you're seeing that there's so many more privileges there's so much grace and there's so much favor there that you want this grace to yourself but the Lord is telling you humble yourself you are not meant to be on the same level as Sarai you are meant to be Hagar and there's nothing wrong with being Hagar you can begin to serve in that area as Hagar. This is why the Bible tells us that I will multiply your descendants exceedingly. You see, when you begin to serve your friends as a Hagar, when you begin to serve your parents as a Hagar, when you begin to serve in that career as a Hagar, when you begin to serve in that blessing as a Hagar, God is able to multiply you. God is able to increase grace, but you need to stay at your position. Don't go up there to Sarah because you desire what Sarah has. If you are in Hagar, if you are a Hagar, you have to be humble. Stay in the position that God has given you today. Do not desire the riches and the favor and the anointing of Sarah because you cannot handle it. Handle the anointing that God has given you. There's an, there's an anointing for Hagar. There's an anointing for Hagar. There's, there's a grace for Hagar. There's a promise for Hagar. There's favor for Hagar when she submits under her mistress, when she begins to function in submission. I don't know if you are Hagar today, or maybe you're like Sarah, but God is saying, stay in your position. Stay in your position. Watch who you're promoting. Watch who you're demoting. Stay in that place that God has given you because you cannot handle any other position. We have to be content with the positions that God gives us in life. We have to be content and happy with the identities that we have, with the spheres of influence that we have, with the grace that we have, with the anointings that we have. We have to be content with that because when we try and move and go to a different place in a different kind of shoes that we cannot feel, this is where danger begins to come. Are you like Sarah today? You're promoting people that are not meant to be promoted. You're elevating people in areas of your life that are not meant to be elevated. This is going to be very dangerous for you because it can begin to birth forth an Ishmael. God wants you in this season. You're so close. You're very close to the promise. You're very close to the time where patience is having its perfect work. In fact, patience is having its perfect work right now, but it's now coming to a complete close. You're, not coming to a, you're now coming to a point of a close whereby now the promise of God is coming to pass, whereby the womb is being opened. The womb is being opened in the name of Jesus. The womb is being opened in the season and you're very close. You cannot afford to promote your, Hag your Hagar. And the Lord is saying there are people who have already promoted their Hagar. If you're in that situation, we are going to pray that God gives you wisdom. And God is able to give you that wisdom. He's able to give you that strength to put Hagar back in a position. To speak into the heart of Hagar even as she sleeps, even as he sleeps or even whatever that situation is, God is able to stir the heart as that thing or that situation is sleeping, to bring it back to the place where it needs to be. So we just want to pray for a turnaround today. Maybe your Hagar has not yet conceived, but if your Hagar has, has already conceived, then you're going to have to deal with the Ishmael that is coming and God will help you to deal with it. God will give you grace to deal with it. But because you did not wait upon him and you ran ahead of him, you're going to have to deal with the consequences of having an Ishmael. But there's grace. God will give you the grace. Let's just pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this word in season. Mighty God. I thank you, oh God, for the patience that is running its perfect work in the lives of your children, mighty God. Patience, oh God, that is making them perfect and complete, oh God, such that they lack nothing concerning their faith, concerning maturity, oh God, in your promises, your breakthroughs, oh God, that you have set and aligned for them in this season. God, there are people, oh Lord, that have promoted Hagar in this season because they were desperate, because they no longer understood the importance of your rhema word, even the prophetic word that you spoke in their lives. Oh God, for some of them, it has been too long, oh God, of them waiting. And now they've lost hope. They're so desperate like Sarah. And they're saying, God has closed my womb. God has caused me to not conceive. Lord, they're even blaming you, oh God, blaming you for your times and your seasons. Father, I pray, forgive your people. Have mercy upon them. Have mercy upon those that are bitter. Lord, remove the root of bitterness. Help them, oh God, to forgive even themselves. Oh God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be forgiveness. Forgiveness, Holy Spirit, power of God. Forgiveness, reveal, reveal, Holy Spirit, that there may be forgiveness. Open up the path 
that they may be forgiveness and that they can trans translate into the next realm that they can walk through to the, to the next realm oh god that you have for them let there be no more boundaries oh god because of unforgiveness because of bitterness and murmuring lord do not look upon your people's murmuring anymore god forgive them i pray in the mighty name of jesus father there are those that have already promoted hagar and they've given hagar the same position as they have and hagar is now despising them lord they are now facing the despising of hagar but god I pray for your strength. Give them strength. Give those people strength. Give them wisdom, oh God, I pray. Speak, oh Lord, even to Hagar, to the situations that are like Hagar, to the situations that are like Egyptians in their lives, oh God. Speak to those situations, oh Lord, that they may go back to the rightful position that they need to go back to, oh God, I pray. In the mighty name of Jesus and those that have already made Hagar to conceive, God, I pray that you give them wisdom on how to relate with the Hagar. Give them wisdom, oh God, even for the Ishmael that is coming. Give them wisdom on how to handle it. Father, because these people ran ahead of you, because your child ran ahead of you because of lack of patience. But God, I pray for grace, even as you gave Abraham and Sarah grace in the time when Ishmael had come. Give your child grace. Give your child peace. Give your child stability. Give your child hope. Oh God, I pray. Help them to know that this is not the end just because Ishmael is coming. Help them to know that this is not the end. That their days of crying will be, will be replaced by days of joy, by days of laughter because of the promise that is coming, because of because of Isaac that is coming. Oh God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you're open up, opening up the wombs of your children. Oh God, the wombs that were closed for many years. I thank you, Lord, that you're opening up those wombs. Oh God, I thank you for the conceptions that are going to take place. Oh God, even physical conceptions. Oh God, even mental conceptions, even financial conceptions, even spiritual conceptions, even psychological conceptions. Oh God, even conceptions to do with their health. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor. Oh God, help your people to be able to say no. Help them to be able, oh God, to say, I cannot afford to walk with you on the same level anymore. Help your people, oh God. And not to be harsh like Sarai, oh God, but to be wise as serpents and gentle as doves. God, help them by your wisdom. Let your spirit of wisdom rest upon them oh god i pray your spirit of counsel and knowledge rest upon them oh god let understanding begin to reign in the lives of your people understanding that comes only from your spirit understanding that comes through your word oh god i pray in the mighty name of jesus and i thank you for your people oh god whom you have blessed and called according to your riches and power and glory be honored and be glorified our lord jesus forever and ever amen and amen Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Glory to God. So God bless you. And this was just a word of warning, really, to um, help you because you are very, very close. And also a word of hope and a word of grace because there's an impartation of grace. If you're already in a place whereby you are saying it's too late for me, there's a grace that has been imparted. And you will know how to handle Ishmael that is coming if an Ishmael has been conceived you'll know how to handle that situation the Ishmael represents a mistake it represents an error it represents a thing that could have been avoided but because the thing is already here God is able to give you grace and grace has been reported you will know what to do and don't be afraid because the promise is greater than the mistakes that you have than the mistakes that you have the promise is greater the joy of the promise is greater than your errors than the things that you could have avoided so continue to just give God glory continue to give him praise and continue to walk with wisdom and with the knowledge that comes from him from the Spirit of God and stay close to the Holy Spirit so God bless you and I'll see you next week take care bye